In this episode of the Design Tours, I travel across the German state of Thuringia to explore its storybook landscape of castles and half-timbered houses and follow in the footsteps of Germany's famous theologian, Martin Luther, the Reformation leader who forever shaped the country, its language, and the world at large. Thuringia is located in central Germany, one of the smallest of the country's 16 states and with a population of 2.1 million. I'm here to retrace how the Reformation influenced the state's art, architecture, and culture. We start at the Wartburg Castle, a hilltop castle of the feudal period in central Europe and the first German castle to be designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Well, we just arrived to the Wartburg Castle. I'm here with Kirsten Wirtgau, who is our English-speaking guide, who is gonna take us on a tour today of this magnificent castle that has over a thousand years of history. So much to see, so much to learn. So first of all, tell us a little bit about the story of this castle, how it came to be. So you have said that we have thousand years of German history on this part. Wartburg Castle sits on a hill overlooking the town of Eisenach in the former communist East Germany. It's about a two-hour drive from Frankfurt. Now Wartburg was the first German castle to be designated at a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It was founded by the Duke Ludwig of Thuringia. Okay, in uh, 1067 there was Louis the Jumper Ludwig der Springer and he was here on the on top of this mountain he looks around and it was uh, such a wonderful landscape that he carried out ca uh, carried out mm -hmm. um, oh wait mountain you should become my castle and uh, there was a little problem because this mountain wasn't in his property oh. so he was very clever he uh, took soil from his own property up to this castle, spread out, and then he built the castle. Very clever, and very he, sneaky. Yeah, and he could swear, this castle is on my own ground. Wartburg has witnessed many pivotal moments in German history. From this vantage point, you can see the castle's various stages of construction. So, you know, the first part here on the left side right <laughs> this is the oldest part okay now uh, this is called the palace the main building from the medieval time from the 12th century in the middle there we have now the museum with our great art collection it's from the 19th century and the third part here the half temperate houses are from the 15th 16th century Okay. So we have different phases of constructions here and this is typical for the important steps in the history, you know. Well, I say let's take a tour. Let's, let's go, go inside. inside. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Imagine if these walls could talk. Well, we're going to go inside and we're going to hear its whispers from the past. We first walk through the Knights Hall. It's sort of like a medieval man cave with a giant fireplace. Then we go to the dining hall, which leads to a room clad in glimmering mosaics known as the Elizabeth Room. It is the room for the ladies. Oh, it was the wow. room for the ladies. Look at this. We have to sit for a minute and just look at this. So we have more than two and a half million little pieces of glass mosaic here. Um, some are underneath gold leaf, mother wow. of pearl, and yeah, different colorful mosaics. <laughs> Do you mosaics in the room tell the story of Saint Elizabeth, 
princess of the Hungarian king. She married the Thuringian landgrave, or duke as he's known. Legend has it that while living at Wartburg, Elizabeth would sneak out to feed and clothe the poor. She given up her countess crown mm -hmm. as a symbol of Christian humility and um, because she she gave everything, food, money, I'll for the poor food. and hungry people, wow. and her countess crown. And what, which was very special, mm -hmm. as she was 20 and four, she died. She died at 24? Very, very young. Oh. And just four years after her death, mm -hmm. He was canonized by the Pope because oh, he, she wow. did so many good things. Mm -hmm. The lady's apartment was restored in 1902 as a reimagining of what a medieval castle would look like. This is our chapel, and we have services here, and we have organ concerts here. And now, with the next room, we jumped from the Romanist period into the Romantic period. We enter the Hall of Minstrels, built in the 12th century and famous for hosting the Battle of the Bards. You can see the scene play out in this large painting. So here's an interesting factoid I just learned. The Wartburg Castle used to host its own talent competition, kind of like its own Superstar search, right? Yeah, or the War of Minstrels. The War of Minstrels. Yeah. And that's what we're looking at here? Yeah, you will see it here in this fresco. Um, six minstrels um, are for a competition here. And they say that the loser should be executed by the hangman. We pass through the Landgrave's chamber into the festival hall. Oh, wow. This is spectacular. Louis II. The Bavarian king, mm -hmm. he was here. He was so impressed about this wonderful festival hall that he copied that one in his own castle. Wow. And um, special is, I think, the ceiling, because mm -hmm. we have a wonderful acoustics here. And this is the point why we have concerts here. You have concerts? Yeah, we have uh, in the season on every weekend, the concert, mm -hmm. mostly Friday or Saturday. Mm -hmm. And uh, the students of Eisenach, they get their high school diploma here in that festival hall. You can relive the Battle of the Bards, also known as the War of Minstrels, in an opera by composer Richard Wagner. He wrote the opera Tannhauser based on this legend. Now, the castle stages a concert of the Tannhauser Opera in the festival hall several times a year. I, I know um, no opera which, was, which is playing on the authentic spot. There's just the opera Tannhauser, mm -hmm. which is playing on the authentic spot here at the Wartburg Castle. Wow. This that's, is, that's this so is the special, special thing. Yeah. Wartburg Castle has an impressive art collection on view in the private rooms of the family of the Grand Duke who once lived in the castle. The highlight here is this German Bible with handwritten notes by Martin Luther in 1541. Yeah, this is the whole German Bible from 1541 and uh, this is the original and Martin Luther and his colleagues wrote something on the side um, which you can see here. We stop to look out the castle window at the sweeping view of the town of Eisenach below. The city is the birthplace of the composer Johann Sebastian Bach and it's also where Reformation theologian Martin Luther arrived in 1498 to attend the town's Latin school as a young boy. So now we are walking through, uh, looks like a new period of construction for the castle, like kind of a half timbered construction. That's right. We are now uh, in the 15th, 16th century, mm -hmm. and we will uh, see now 
Luther's room, the room where he translated the New Testament and we, where he worked and lived. Now let's chat for a moment about why Martin Luther is such an influential figure. History credits him with enacting the greatest reform in the Protestant church with his 95 Thesis more than 500 years ago. Wartburg Castle played a pivotal role in the Reformation as the hiding place for Martin Luther. He arrived May 4, 1521 and spent 300 days hiding in this room to evade arrest for writing his 95 Thesis, criticizing the Roman Catholic Church. While in hiding, Martin Luther translated the New Testament from Greek to German. The authentic genre where Martin Luther lived and stayed for 10 months. And he was not Martin Luther here in that time in 1521-22. Um, he got the name Junker Jörg, Squire George, for security reason, because he was excommunicated and he was declared as Vogelfrei, that means everybody could kill him. Right. And so for security reasons, he got the name Junker Jörg and he changed his outward appearance like a monk. And yeah, he stayed and lived here in that room. And he translated here just into 10 weeks, the uh, New Testament from the original Greek into German. And that was so important for all of us um, because we, everybody could read the Bible now. This is where the German language was born, you know, mm -hmm. because yeah. he connected the different dialects. Mm -hmm. um, he connected, I think, 18 different dialects to one German language. Wow. And now everybody in the north and in the south and the east and west could understand the words in the Bible and then later more and more and more. Wow. And so I think this is the cradle mm -hmm. of the German language here. Luther's room still has the original floor and paneled walls. You can see the names and dates etched into stones bearing witness to the fact that the castle has been visited by Christian pilgrims since the end of the 16th century. After he left Wartburg, Martin Luther returned at Wittenberg and translated the Old Testament into German. 2022 marks the 500th year anniversary of Martin Luther's translation of the Bible. Over the centuries, the castle fell into disuse and deterioration. In the mid-1950s, while Thuringia was part of communist-held East Germany, the German Democratic Republic restored the main building to its Romanesque style. In 1991, UNESCO designated Wartburg a World Heritage Site. And so we just walked through over a thousand years of history, and as our guide said, the cradle of the German language. Such is the beauty of traveling and especially exploring Germany's old castles. You really get a sense of history and perspective and, and your place in the world today. Up next, we continue the spiritual journey of the 15th century Protestant theologian Martin Luther as we travel to Erfurt, the state capital of Thuringia, and it's where Martin Luther became a monk. Erfurt is the capital of the German state of Thuringia. During medieval times, a major trade route ran through Erfurt, shaping its history, culture, and commerce. Now, I want to explore why Erfurt is also known as Martin Luther's spiritual home. I met up with my guide, Matthias, who has lived in Erfurt for the past 40 years. And Martin Luther made his studies here between 1501 and 1505 um, at the great University of Erfurt, which I would like to show you. The church reformer lived during Erfurt's golden age, around 1500. He started his studies in Erfurt as a teenager. He was Catholic at the time, and Martin Luther's father wanted his son to become a lawyer. Here come. We are standing right in front of the old University of Erfurt. The first permission to found a university ever given to a German city was here, 1379. So we could claim for being the oldest founded German university. You can imagine Martin Luther did his immatriculation here 
in that university in 1501. As we explore the city's medieval core, retracing Martin Luther's legacy, Matthias reminds me that Erfurt once had the nickname as the Other Rome because of its large concentration of churches, chapels, abbeys, and monasteries, including the majestic St. Mary's Cathedral and the Church of St. Severus, two masterful examples of German Gothic design. Martin Luther was ordained as a Catholic priest in the Church of St. Severus. Erfurt resides along the banks of the Goethe River, which at times branches off, dividing the city into two banks. But fortunately, they made a great ditch surrounding the city course around about 120 years ago. And this is a good protection system against floodings, and it works till today very well. So we have a lot of parks, a lot of green islands, and <laughs> a little part um, north from us is called Little Venice because of the plenty bridges we have there. Along our walk, I notice a little house jutting out over the river. Such strange architecture that I had to ask about it. In the older days, like today, everybody had to pay taxes. And here they demanded to get taxes for the ground they built their house on. And so a clever professor who donated these dormitories said, let's use houses edging over. So there's no ground underneath, so you have no reason to pay ground taxes. It's a very cheap and simple solution for saving taxes. So, so we can learn from our modern life. So this is a very clever way to escape property yeah. taxes. I simply build my home on the edge of a bridge. Yeah. We arrive at St. Augustine's Monastery, where Martin Luther joined as a Catholic, the religion he would later condemn in his spiritual journey and write about in his 95 Thesis. This is a gate where Martin Luther went into the monastery. This was the moment of his final step, leaving the world, a yeah, complete world, and then became a mending monk. And now, you come, after you. <laughs> Let's relive this moment. So when Martin Luther arrived to the monastery, he spent a year as a novice, and he lived in the half-timber house right yeah, The there. guest house on the right guest side, house. the first weeks. The then first weeks. he became his room inside the monastery because it was clear he really wanted to become a monk, a mendicant in the order of St. Augustine. In the medieval world, we had a couple of different orders with different ways to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the order of St. Augustine belonged to the group of the mendicants, which means they were like the Franciscan monks or, the, or Dominican monks, mm -hmm. also this order of St. Augustine. And how long was Martin Luther here? Yeah, monastery. he stayed here finally until 1511, so yeah, up to six years he was a member of that In 1511, Martin Luther became a priest and moved to Wettenberg to attend the university. While there, he wrote his history-making 95 Thesis, forming the basis of the Protestant Reformation, causing a split in Christianity. Okay, so it's time for a little history on the Reformation. On October 31st, 1517, Martin Luther nailed his 95 Thesis to the door of the University of Wittenberg Church. The document condemned the Roman Catholic Church for excesses and corruption, including the practice of seeking payment for the forgiveness of sins. Martin Luther's 95 revolutionary opinions planted the seeds for the Protestant Reformation. Martin Luther would forever refer to Erfurt as his alma mater, his feeding mother, because of the city's formative role in his life. Martin Luther's influence on Erfurt made it a center of reformation and of German humanism. In 2017, Erfurt celebrated the 500th anniversary of the Reformation, drawing visitors from around the globe. Martin Luther died of natural causes in 1546 in his town of birth, leaving the Western civilization a new branch of Christianity called Protestantism. The revolutionary ideas he put forth in his 95 Thesis eventually caused a split in Christianity because of its challenges to the Catholic Church's authority. This is known in history books as the Protestant Reformation. So I'm always looking for travel experiences off the beaten path. This is why I chose the city of Frankfurt. It's easy to get to, strategically located between three major airports, Frankfurt, Munich, and Berlin. But it's a city rich in culture, 
rich in a legacy of craft and definitely authentic experiences you won't find in mainstream travel. So here's my takeaway from my travels through Thuringia. The state holds hidden treasures of Germany, lesser known towns that take you back in time for experiential travel. And so we say goodbye from the German state of Thuringia. Until the Design Tours travels again, stay tuned and stay inspired.